as you can tell by the uh, lack of a pint glass over there, I'm on call for work this week, and so I don't have a lot of time to throw, throw together a video. So I thought I would just uh, take a look at these little 3D printable spotlights that I found on Thingiverse and probably on a few other online uh, 3D printing sources. They're kind of neat too. So the file that I found came basically with three parts. The uh, barrel, the front barrel here, this one, um, the back housing, and the yoke that uh, holds it up. This base is just something that I randomly printed just to stand it on. Um, you'd be able to screw it to just about anything. And the guy who originally designed this said that he designed it to mount onto T-nuts on the frame of his 3D printer to shine down onto the bed. Which is pretty cool, I thought. There are actually two different versions of the front barrel available. There's that long throw spotlight one, and then there's this short one um, that you can put on there, which also does a uh, does more of a floodlight, a little bit wider beam kind of thing. And even with the bright studio lighting that I've got going on here, let me shade it a little bit, you can sort of see it. In the file that you download, there is also a gel frame that you can drop in the front here, but I haven't bothered to use it because you know, I don't need to. I also found a remix of the file, which is basically the same front barrel, except for it comes with barn doors. And I just put some bits of wires in there to use as a handle, or as a hinge, rather. And then this can kind of cut down and shape the beam a little bit. Let's again shine it on the mug. There you can sort of uh, shape the beam how you want it, which is pretty cool. And that is that is a standard thing in theatrical lights, has been forever. So the light that is designed to fit inside it is these little star style, I think Big Clive calls them Luxian star style, uh, one watt LEDs. I suppose if we could find a three watt in that same size, it would fit in there too. But that's what that is in there. And that's what I've got in here just on a couple of short little uh, wires. There is a little bit of room in the back there for electronics, but not too much. Um, I've been thinking about putting some control electronics back there so I can uh, do some other fancy things, but I'm not sure. Of course, those star-shaped LEDs are not just available in white. They're also available in RGB. And why just print one light when you can print a bunch of them? So here we have two different ones doing RGB under control of this Arduino Nano using two slightly different methods. Well, same but different. This one on this side is just a standard NeoPixel, aka WS2812 LED. It's just on a little circuit board like that. There you can see the pins on the back of it. It's got five volts and ground and then data in and data out all the way across. So you just snap these individual circuit boards off and solder them down to whatever you want. And in this case, I've just put it onto a little piece of perf board and then ran a, uh, four wires out in some heat shrink sleeving onto some pin headers and it gets its control the same way as any uh, WS2812 LED does. Um, and then the voltage comes in separately. So that's that one. This one is one of these, exactly one of these. I'm not sure if you can see, I've commented up the red, green, and blue positives down there and then ran the negatives out on wires out the back here. And I didn't have any red, so I used orange, but green, blue, and that one is the common. And those land on a WS2811 chip back there, which is the control chip that's in uh, the NeoPixels of the WS2812s just separately as a standalone little chip. I've got mine mounted on a breadboard adapter, but it is a little surface mount chip. And then it's taking exactly the same data from the Arduino uh, into it, um, and then its data out is going over to this one. And I could, if I wanted to, add extra uh, NeoPixels into the string. I'm not going to right now, but I could if I wanted to. I did when I was experimenting earlier. So I could use either of those methods to daisy chain a whole bunch of these things together and create myself an entire light show. I think that might be pretty cool to do. You know, from an 
old rock and roll kind of a kind of a standpoint. I think I'd probably use these floodlights mostly just because it throws more light around. But uh, yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. I'll put the links down in the description, but here is the light that I downloaded to print out. As you can see, it's a 112th scale stage spotlight. And this is what the guy originally designed it for is lighting up inside his printer cabinet, which is kind of cool. The file comes with the back piece, the short front piece, the long front piece, uh, this gel frame on the front, which I chose not to print, the yoke, and this little spike for, I guess, mounting it into, I don't know, what, a flower pot maybe to light up a plant, something. And I did find there is actually somebody's uh, made a base for specifically for it, but that's not the one that I used. But I'll put a link to this one as well, just in case you feel like doing this. And here is the remix. Basically, they just changed the front around a little bit and added the barn doors that you just put a piece of wire through there as a hinge. I used a uh, 18 gauge solid wire. And so you print off four of those and one of the front barrel and you too can have your own rock and roll light show. I'm going to have to find the file for this uh, piece of this truss work and print off some of that. That looks pretty cool. I think I might want to do that. I don't know why I want to do that. I just want to. Or if you prefer, you can also get this remix of the light from uh, Prusa's Printables website. It comes just with, I think that's the, I think that's the longer barrel, but he's added in his remix, this little snoot on the front of it to focus the beam a little bit more. And the ones that I put together, I used an M3 screws to hold it together. This guy's added this little uh, friction pin for the hinge point so either is an option and then the leds as i said are available in all sorts of places i'll put a link down below to this well to one listing i'm not sure if it'll be this one or another one it might be a search term but it'll get you close in order to fit properly into the housing get the one with the pcb um one watt i suppose I suppose you could get the three watt, but one watt's probably bright enough. I don't think you'd want to heat it up too much with the three watt. And then there's a variety of colors. You can get, you know, any standard LED color, or you can get the RGB version. And I guess just for completeness, there is the version of the WS2812 that I used on these little PCBs. You can get the circuit board in white or black. I just happen to have white ones and so 50 of them for 1538 Canadian with free shipping. That's not too bad at all. So just a quick fun little video today. Um, nothing too high tech. I just thought these were pretty cool and interesting to play with. So I figured I'd share it. Thanks for watching. Uh, questions or comments down below as usual. I will talk to you later.